Hi, welcome to Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to test this Wulil's 12 volts, 100 amps hour, lithium, iron phosphate battery. We are going to explain the specs of the battery. Then I am going to discharge the battery at 10 amps, 20 amps and 50 amps to check the capacity. The plot of discharge is viewed and explained, so we better understand the performance of the battery. I am also going to test the battery at 200 amps rate for a few seconds. Then we will do a short circuit test as well. I am also going to charge the battery and give you my feedback on that as well. Let's get started. This Wulil's 12 volts, 100 amps hour, lithium iron phosphate battery with built-in 4S100A battery management system, or BMS. It has a simple two terminals which you connect your battery charger to and charge it. The internal BMS has overcharge protection, overcurrent protection, and short circuit protection. The battery comes with a five years warranty. The battery has this 6133A battery voltage and capacity meter, to give you some basic information such as voltage, capacity, and visual capacity of the battery. I purchased this battery from AliExpress and received it the next day here in Canada, tax and duty free. If you are living in the US, Canada, Poland, Japan, or Russia, you can receive it in up to seven days and won't be charged any import taxes. Let's have a look at specification of this battery. Nominal voltage is 12.8 volts. Nominal capacity is 100 ampere hour at 0.2 C. Built-in BMS is 4S100A. Energy capacity is 1280 watt hour. That is 12.8 volts times 100 ampere and it is equal to 1280 watt hour. Life cycle or how many times you can charge it is greater than 4000 times at 0.2 C. End of life 70% of capacity. Charge voltage is 14.6 volts, plus minus 200 millivolts. Charge current, 20 ampere. Maximum charge current, 50 ampere. Maximum discharge continuous current, 100 ampere and 200 ampere for less than three seconds. Discharge cutoff voltage is 10.0 volts. Charge temperature is minus 20 to 60 degrees Celsius, minus four to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Storage temperature, 0 to 45 degrees Celsius, 32 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Water and dust resistance, IP5. Case material is ABS. Dimensions, length, width, and height 320 by 185 by 220 millimeters. Weight of this battery is about 12 kilograms. Terminal type is M8. If you want to purchase this battery, please do so via the affiliated links below this video. The links are to Authentic Wulil's store, and I will receive a commission. Thank you. What is 0.2C? 0 0.2 in fraction is 1 over 5 or 1 fifth, and C stands for capacity. So, for this battery 0.2C means 1 over 5 of capacity. The capacity of this battery is 100 ampere, and 1 over 5 is 20 ampere. So to get 100 ampere hour capacity, we should discharge the battery at maximum of 20 ampere, or less than 20 amperes. This lithium iron phosphate battery of 12 volts has a maximum charge voltage of 14.6 volts. You can use a battery charger such as D20 Smart Charger which can charge 12 volts and 24 volts of all types of batteries. The charger will take care of the current and voltage, and you don't have to worry about setting voltage and current. I will provide links to battery chargers in the description. To use a smart charger like this, do not connect it first. Let's select the mode, which is lithium iron phosphate. In this charger, we are going to press this button. It goes to repair mode, lithium ion, lead acid, and then to lithium iron phosphate. Now this is ready. Make sure the bolts are tightened. They should not be loose when you connect this type of clamp. 
So here connect and connect the other clip. Now the charge has started showing 1.2 Amper, but you can set it to 5 Amper, 10 Amper, or 20 Amperes. For a 12 volts battery, it can charge it with up to 20 Amperes. I can set it to lower current of maximum 10 Amperes. Or you can go with 20. Once the charging is completed, this will turn off and will say full. Charging using a power supply. You can use a power supply that has constant voltage, CV, and constant current, CC. There are two values you must set properly. You must set the maximum charge voltage not greater than 14.6 volts, and the nominal or maximum charge current. The nominal charge current is 20 amper for this battery, but you can go as high as 5 amperes. Here is my power supply. This can supply 30 volts and up to 60 A amper. And I can set the voltage and current. At the back it has a switch which I can turn it on and off. And it has proper huge terminals which I have connected to a 4 AWG wire, while only one terminal is connected. I am turning the power supply on, setting the voltage to 14.6 volts. I set the course value from here. From here I fine tune the voltage. For the current, if I turn it to the right, this is a maximum of 60 amperes. Halfway is 30 and if I go somewhere here, just above zero, I am going higher. The CC light is not on. That is enough. The power supply is ready. I turn the power supply off. The terminals are tight in property. Do not apply too much force, otherwise it will break. Make sure the wires are not loose. Now let's turn the power supply on. When I turned it on, the current was 4.5 amperes and the voltage was reduced to 13.3 volts. So this is protecting it. Once you turn it on, do not touch the voltage knobs. We can just adjust the current. Let's adjust the current. To 20 amperes. Now it is about 20 amperes. Now let's use my clamp meter. This is UNI-T402+. I will provide you with the link below the video. Now let's measure the current. And here. The current is 20.6 amper. Let's increase the current to 50 amperes because we can supply 50 amperes. As you can see it shows 51 Amper, let's adjust it from the power supply. So it is now 50 Amperes. Let's change it back to 20 Amperes. Once the battery is fully charged, you will see this voltage will increase slowly towards 14.6 volts. And the current will be decreased towards zero, and it will be zero. And the voltage reached to 14.6 volts. And you will know the battery is fully charged. Discharging, powering your load. Battery DOD stands for depth of discharge. It refers to the percentage of a battery's capacity that has been discharged relative to its maximum capacity. For example, this battery has a total capacity of 100 amp hours, or AH, and 80 amp hours have been discharged.
then the depth of discharge is 80%. Deep discharges, where a battery is depleted close to its full capacity, can put more stress on the battery and reduce its lifespan. Many battery manufacturers recommend keeping the depth of discharge within a certain range to optimize battery longevity. The life of the battery depends on depth of discharge or DOD. If you discharge the battery at 100% DOD, you will get 4,000 time charge life. If your DOD is 80% or you discharge it up to 80%, then the battery can be used or charged about 6,000 times, which gives you a much longer usable life. This battery is allowed to be discharged up to 100 amps, but that is the maximum and we should be careful. I have done four discharge tests. First, standard 20 amps discharge. 20 amps electronic load is connected to the battery. Then 10 amps discharge test is performed. Then I test it with a discharge current of 50 amps, 100 amps, and finally a 200 amps discharge test is preformed. 20 amps discharge and capacity test. 20 amps discharge should give the best result and maximum capacity as this rate is one of the important specs of this battery. The 0.2C is one-fifth of the capacity, so if we divide 100 by 5, we get 20 amps. To discharge this 100 amps hour battery at the rate of 20 amps, it will take 5 hours to discharge or consume all of the energy of it. Here I have connected the battery using 4 AWG wires to my electronic load. To read the correct voltage of the battery and get an accurate result in our calculation, I have connected separate sensing wires to the battery so the voltage drop across these main wires do not affect our calculations. Here is the interface of the software for my electronic load. We can see the voltage, the current, the power, and the capacity here. I have set the discharge current at 20 ampere, and I have set the stopping condition at 100 ampere hour. So when discharge reaches 100, the discharge process is stopped. Remember we have built-in protections such as undervoltage protection in place inside the battery on the BMS. So it will protect the battery in case the voltage of the battery goes below minimum voltage of 10 volts. We can see the voltage, the discharge current, the capacity, and the running time here. Now let's run the discharge process. All of the parameters you see on this screen are recorded on a comma-separated value file or CSV, which we can later view on spreadsheet programs such as Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel. I will let this process run for 5 hours and we'll come back to view the data and have a look at the plot on the spreadsheet. Let's read the discharge current on the clamp meter. We are drawing 20 amps current now. Here after 5 hours, the process has stopped and let's have a look at the data. We have all these columns. The first one is the time in seconds from the moments we started the process. Then we have columns for the voltage, current, power, resistance, capacity, and save time. We have about 16,000 seconds or rows of data. As you can see the discharge has been stopped at 10.758 volts by the internal BMS of the battery. The capacity has reached 89.7 ampere hour. Meaning if we discharge this battery at the range of 20 ampere, we get about 90 ampere hour. Here is the plot of voltage versus capacity. As you can see, as the time passes, the voltage drops from 13 volts to 10.7 volts over this 5 hours period. If I add the trend line, we can see the slope of the change in voltage and it is very clear. Here the slope is minus 6, times 10 to the power minus 5. So, if we discharge this battery at the 20 amps rate, we get 90% of the capacity or 90 ampere hour. I am going to reduce the discharge current to 10 amps, which is 0.1 C. I hope to see if we can get a higher capacity. The wiring is the same as before. The settings on the electronics load is exactly the same as previous discharge test we just saw, except the discharge current is set to 10 amps. Because we are discharging the battery at 10 ampere rate, it will take 10 hours to discharge it. Here is the settings screen. All the data will be saved. Let's start the discharge. Let's read the discharge current on the clamp meter. We are drawing 10 amps current now.
I will come back after 10 hours to review the results of discharge on the spreadsheet. Here after 10 hours, the process has stopped and let's have a look at the data. We have all these columns. The first one is the time in seconds from the moments we started the process. Then we have columns for the voltage, current, power, resistance, capacity, and save time. We have about 30,574 seconds or rows of data. As you can see, the discharge has stopped at 11.076. I'm not sure why, but my electronic load might have stopped it. The capacity has reached 90.5 ampere hour. Meaning if we discharge this battery at the range of 10 ampere, we get about 90 ampere hour. Here is the plot of voltage versus capacity. As you can see, as the time passes, the voltage drops from 13 volts to 11.076 volts over this 10 hour period. For this I have added another 4 AWG wire in parallel on both positive and negative terminals so we minimize the resistance of the wire and reduce the waste on the wire. I have connected separate sensing wires to the battery so the voltage drop across these main wires do not affect our calculations. I have set the discharge current at 50 ampere and I have set the stopping condition at 100 ampere hour. It will take 2 hours to fully discharge this battery. Now let's run the discharge process. Let's read the discharge current on the clamp meter. We are drawing 50 amps current now. I will come back after two hours to review the results of discharge on the spreadsheet. Air after two hours, the process has stopped and let's have a look at the data. We have all these columns. The first one is the time in seconds from the moments we started the process. Then we have columns for the voltage, current, power, resistance, capacity, and save time. We have about 6,400 seconds or rows of data. As you can see, the discharge has stopped at 10.68 volts. The capacity has reached 86.6 ampere hour. Meaning if we discharge this battery at the rate of 50 amperes, we get about 87 ampere hour. Here is the plot of voltage versus capacity. As you can see, as the time passes, the voltage drops from 13 volts to 10.68 volts over this two hour period. So we got 87% of the capacity or 87 ampere hour. I am going to test this battery at 100 amps, which is 1C, meaning 1 times the capacity, which is 100 ampere hour. For this, I have added another 4 AWG wire in parallel on both positive and negative terminals, so we minimize the resistance of the wire and reduce the waste on the wire. I have connected separate sensing wires to the battery, so the voltage drop across these main wires do not affect our calculations. Now I've set the discharge current at 100 amperes. Let's just run the test. Here the discharge current is 100 ampere. You can see the plot of voltage and current. Here the capacity has started counting and the time is showing here. Let's read the discharge current on the clamp meter. We are drawing 100 amps current now. I will come back after one hour to review the results of discharge on the spreadsheet. After one hour, the test has stopped and let's have a look at the data. Here is the spreadsheet. I have columns for the voltage, a column for current, a column for capacity, time, and save time. We have about 51 minutes of data saved every second. As you can see, the discharge has stopped at 10.73 volts. The capacity has reached 85.1 ampere hour. Meaning if we discharge this battery at the rate of 100 amperes, we get about 85 ampere hour. Here is the plot of voltage versus time. As you can see, as the time passes, the voltage drops from 13 volts to 10.73 volts over this one hour period. So we got 85% of the capacity or 85 ampere hour.
200 ampere very short period circuit test. I am going to test this battery at 200 amps for 3 seconds. Let's see if it can handle the 200 ampere load test for 3 seconds. The wiring is the same as before with two parallel 4 AWG wires with sensing wires. You can see the voltage of the battery is 13.5 volts. And in here sensing is turned on. I am going to test it with 20 amperes for 10 seconds. So the voltage is coming towards nominal. Then we are going for 200 amperes for 3 seconds. And then 5 amps for 40 seconds. It will stop in 1 minute anyways. Everything is ready. I am clicking on run. Now 20 amperes are being drawn for 10 seconds. Then it will go to 200 amperes. We are drawing 200 amps current now. Now it has changed the current to 5 amperes. Amazing! It was able to handle 200 amperes. It could handle it for a longer period. But I respect the manufacturer's data. And here on the save data, we see 20 ampere and then 200 amperes for 3 seconds. The voltage was 11.7 volts. Here is the spreadsheet of our data. We have all these column data. But here the columns we need are time, voltage, current, and power. At 20 amperes, the voltage is 13.1 volts. After 10 seconds, when the current is changed to 200 ampere, the voltage is dropped to 11.82 volts. After 3 seconds, the current changed to 5 ampere, and we see the voltage goes back to 13 volts. And it stayed there until we turned off the load. Let's have a look at the plot of voltage and current. The blue line is the voltage, and the orange line is the current. When current is 20 amperes here, we see the voltage is about 13 volts. When the current changes to 200 amps, the voltage is dropped to 11.8 volts. And it goes down until the current is changed back to 5A and we see the voltage jumps back to 13 volts. Amazing! It was able to handle 200 amperes. It could handle it for a longer period. But I respect the manufacturer's data. Short circuit test. Now let's do a short circuit test. We can read the voltage of the battery to be 13.3 volts. I have connected the battery to my electronics using these two 4 AWG wires in parallel, so we can handle higher current. Now I am going to turn on the short circuit in here and turn on the electronic load. Pay attention to the voltage and current. The current will go very high and we will see the graph in here. The voltage will be decreased and the internal protection of battery will kick in. Let's turn it on. As you can see the current went high and then went low. Now the current is zero and the protection turned on to protect the battery. So the voltage is zero and the current is 390 milliampere. Let's turn off the load, and as you can see the voltage is now 4 point volts. The voltage graph shows it up. Now the battery will not work. We have to revive it. I am going to connect the charger to the battery. Pay attention to the voltage. Connecting the positive terminal and the negative to the negative, as soon as the voltage of the charger appeared on the battery, now disconnect the charger, the battery has been revived. After conducting various discharge tests on this battery at different current rates, I have reached a conclusion. I discharged the battery at rates of 10, 20, 50, 100, and 200 amperes, and in all cases, both the battery and the internal battery management system, BMS, performed flawlessly. However, in terms of capacity, I only achieved 90% or 90 ampere hours. The primary reason for this discrepancy is the undervoltage protection feature of the BMS, which triggers at 10.7 volts. If the BMS were to permit discharge down to 10 volts, a safe value for lithium iron phosphate batteries, we might achieve the full 100 ampere hours or 100% of the capacity. Regarding size and weight, they appear reasonable. My main concern lies with the quality of the batteries and the BMS, which can only be truly assessed over an extended period of use. The seller or manufacturer on AliExpress offers a written statement of a five-year warranty, providing considerable assurance. However, 
It's important to note that if any issues arise, shipping the battery back to China, especially if the manufacturer, Wu Lils, requests it, could be very costly. During charging, I never charged the battery to its full 100 ampere hour capacity, as I was unable to discharge it fully. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to receive notifications when I upload new content.